Welcome back. It's me, Nemesh. This is New Joke Night, February 20th. Sorry we've been gone for a little bit. Been on the road tonight. Starting up a bunch of parent stuff. Um, CIA, uh, travel, and uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. We'll see how it goes. What up? All right, my fun crowd, I got more show. What is it? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I really have nothing to talk about. I haven't been doing shit all day. Uh, I just watched the entire series of Mr. N Mrs. Smith. I've you seen it on Amazon. Yeah. You seen it? It's uh, with Donald Glover and Maya Erskine. They they play spies that are married, and uh, I watched it with my wife. And I looked at her when we were done. It's like. Our lives are not interesting at all. <laughs> like, because they're spies and they kill people, then they fuck. And it's like, yo, that. Should we. <laughs> should we, like, kill somebody? Because <laughs> I'm like horny and shit after they kill somebody. I'm like, the closest we could get, my wife's in real estate, I do comedy, the closest we could get is like, maybe we fucking an open house or something. <laughs> Third floor walk up? No, that's too much work. I met a spy, though. I, met, I know someone that works in the CIA, and he's, he's got a job where he's like an analyst half of the year, and then he'll go to Afghanistan for like three months. And he was like, what the fuck are you doing? But this is the wild part. Five years ago, five years ago, when he was in, still in the CIA, remains in the CIA to this day. And it, by the way, I won't tell you his name. Even if I did, I Googled it last night. And there's like seven pictures. If you Google anybody, you will get like, or maybe John Smith, like no, maybe not John Smith, but if you Google Nimesh Patel, you will get me and then like 40 pages of other, even people with Patel in the last name, Nimesh in the first name, anything. You Google this guy, first name, n nothing shows up. And I'm like, who the fuck? <laughs> this dude had everything deleted about his name. So, but five years ago, this guy, I was, this kid I went to high school with, ended up robbing a bunch of banks. It's a bank robber, robbed three banks. He lived with the CIA agent as roommate, and the CIA agent had no fucking idea. That's who was in our CIA. <laughs> Just living with a bank robber for like three years. Living with this dude for three years. Shotgun in the bathroom, no fuck. Yeah, people in Virginia just have guns. Like that was the, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking wild. That's who's in the CIA, so I think I had a shot. Uh, <laughs> I could have done that. Anyway, I do stand up now, obviously. And uh, I went to NYU, right down the street. I went to school at West 3rd Street and 6th Avenue. And here I am at West 3rd Street and 6th Avenue. <laughs> Doing great things. But I was obviously pre-med. I was obviously a pre-med person. <laughs> and I, no, I'm, I'm confirming the stereotype. Indian people, we, I, I wanted to be a doctor. Honestly, I had dreams. I was, I'm, I'm going to be a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon. That was my dream. <laughs> Honestly. And then I got a C plus in organic chemistry. I was like, fuck those kids. I'll give a shit. <laughs> Weak ass hearts. <laughs> I, I was also I also was a finance major, which is tough now because all my friends who worked in finance and pursued that are all multimillionaires, and like I just look at myself like I could have been doing that shit. Here I am telling fucking CIA jokes to a bunch of people that will not give a fuck ten minutes from now. <laughs> but they're all like they're all getting fucking rich. All my friends are like you gotta invest. In this artificial intelligence boom, you gotta invest in NVIDIA and AMD. They're all getting rich on that shit. I'm busy trying to convince ChatGPT that 9-11 was an inside job. That's how, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'm making money on artificial intelligence. <laughs> Dear ChatGPT, this is Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> I just wanna say I had nothing to do with that shit. <laughs> it was all the American government. And ChatGPT said back, welcome back, President Bush. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> this side of the room, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. <laughs> how, mu how much was this ticket? 
<laughs> how much? How much does this ticket cost? Twenty bucks. Twenty. You paid to be here. You could pretend to have a good time. <laughs> it's not that difficult. Just fucking fake laugh. I don't know why people do that. Just come out and not have fun on purpose. Are the jokes not working, or are you just? Who's your favorite comedian? You, sir. I'm looking at not you in the plaid. You in the back. I can see you. Bill Bill Burr. Yeah. Yeah, you're not getting Bill Burr for twenty four dollars. <laughs> that's a fair answer. I appreciate that, Bill Burr. Yeah, sorry. Hold on, let me rant about Philadelphia for forty five minutes and maybe I'll crack your ass. Over. <laughs> sorry, that's a deep cut. Don't worry about it. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, working at a hedge fund. I worked at a hedge fund. I worked at a hedge fund right after I graduated college, and uh, but as an assistant. You know, I was on the path to become like an analyst, someone that made like a ton of money. But I was like, no, I'm going to chase this dream of doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> and I would leave at like 6 o'clock every day to go do, I would scribble, I would do all my work. And I would spend an hour writing jokes right before open mics. And I would leave, take the train, go to open mics. And the boss, the guy that ran the company, this is a 55-year-old guy worth $600 million. And one time I left. And he's like, why do you keep leaving at six? I was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm trying to do stand-up comedy and you know, open mics and stuff. He's like, okay, go do your jokes. <laughs> and, and I asked him, all right, Ron, what do, you, what do you think the point of life is? Because you know, I'm trying to be an artist and stuff. And he's like, it's money. That's the answer. Money is the point of life. And I had nothing to say to him. Because this dude had a master's degree in philosophy and a PhD in mathematics. He had studied all of life's essential questions. <laughs> and the conclusion was money is the answer. <laughs> Here I am, like, I'll fucking make people laugh and give them some joy for two to three minutes at a time. Nope, it's cash. That's the only thing that matters. Don't worry, I'm not having some kind of existential crisis about the decisions I've made at all. No, I, I could always just quit life. You know, walk off the bridge. <laughs> it's, it's good to know that it's an option. <laughs> you guys fucking bailed on that. <laughs> I'm not going to kill myself, guys. Don't worry, my life is too good. This, this is why I don't do anything. This is it. This is re you guys have probably like proper jobs and shit. This is, I don't do anything. It's, look, I'm doing well in comedy. I know it may not seem like it, but I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing great, even right now. Yeah, everybody, thank you very much. You see me plenty of times. Thank you very much. What's your name? Nidia. Nidia and Ken. Nidia and Ken. What do y'all do? Seen you, a lot. you see me a lot. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking everywhere. Yeah, I'm all up in your fucking Instagram feeds. No, no, no. No, in real life. Thank you. In New York. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Hell yeah, dude. I never got this kind of encouragement as a child. <laughs> Any anytime, anytime someone's like, keep going, I'm like, mom. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. No, my mom's great, you know. I realize I've been, I'm 38 years old, and like I feel like a lot of comedians my age have started talking a lot more about their parents because we all realize they're going to die soon. And it's just like creeping up. Look, Jesus Christ, yeah, your parents will die. Okay, this fucking, I'm sorry. I'm trying to work myself into the will. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> like, mom and dad, let's get close. <laughs> I remember, I, like, I, I'm not, a, like, I know I do stand up and, like, I seem like I'm a great communicator, but I'm not. Like, especially with my parents. It, over Christmas, over Christmas, we got, um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there's this, like game called Parents Are Human. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's like a, a card set where you just pull out questions to like start conversations with your parents and like really have deep conversations or silly conversations. And it was my parents and my, um, my wife's parents, my in-laws, who were white. And I, I pulled out um, a card and said, can you recall a time that uh, your parents um, disciplined you? And how did they make you feel? And and my my wife's parents were like, uh, yeah, I remember one time my mom grounded me, like uh, I stole a bunch of bologna or some shit. And I was just like, all right. And then my dad, 
<laughs> my dad was like, yeah, one time we were um, in the backyard. Uh, we had this, we lived on a farm, and we were in the backyard, and we chased this goat, and um, we got really close to the goat, and then it ran away. And then my, my, my father, my, my paternal grandpa, um, my father took a stick, and he beat our asses <laughs> in front of the entire village. <laughs> and, my, and my dad was like, yeah, it's, you know, he just didn't want us to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and my in-laws were like, that's abuse? I'm like, nah, that's Christmas, baby. That's what <laughs> it's good to know my parents like that. You ever realize you might have been a bad kid? <laughs> like, like, to your parents? Not just like, oh, you were mischievous and like you did stupid shit, but like you were a bad you did not return the love the way you were supposed to. You were like a piece of shit to your parents. Eh? That's what I want to leave you with. <laughs> Just think about that. Some of that shit is your fault, okay? All right, listen, I got to go. Thank you guys so much for being here. I mean, I'll come out. Bye. Bye, Reese. Yeah. I got this one. Thank you, man. Give it up, man. All right, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Yo, I'm here. Maybe you dropped out of medical school. All the money's going to your sister. Yeah, she's, de she's definitely taking all that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, we got one more show. We did it. Guys, you're going to take over the Thank you. Okay. You like my new car? <laughs> this shit is crazy, dude. <laughs> That's a wild whip. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, the parent stuff is gonna come together. And then that CIA story about the guy that lived with the bank robber is 100% true. What's up, brother? How are you? Good, man. Uh, the parents thing is solid. I think the, the parents are human thing is new, and so we can put that in, but I'm definitely gonna be talking about that a lot more, because it's like really a good way to mine material. I gotta go through the entire deck and see like what else they said. Yeah, overall pretty good. I think the the idea of you being like a piece of shit to your parents, like that is a concept I want to explore because I think it always, when you talk about therapy and parents, it's always like what they did to you, but you never talk about what you did to them because it's mutually beneficial. So like obviously a two-way street. So that'll be fun to explore. Talk to your parents, people, if you can. You're so fortunate to have them around in your life. All right, that's enough. Peace out. That's been New Joke Night.